Hello everyone and welcome to the walkthrough video with Nedmel74. We're going to be doing the Consume King's Garden and Untended Graves. Uh, there's a couple of things we're going to be getting in this video. First of all, we're going to be um, getting a lot of scales uh, after we beat Osiris. That's going to be one of the bigger things. And there's also an Ember that's really important. Sorry, an Estus Flash Shroud that's really important. Just um, coming up here at the start. So I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope it's useful. Pick up that soul item there. And let's keep going. So for these guys, you basically want to hold up your shield. You want to get around the back of them as much as possible. And backstabbing is the easiest method, uh, especially if you're not used to their parry timing. So get around them, backstab, and finish them off. You can kick their shield as well if you're having a bit of a problem. So you see there, he's held it up for quite a while, so you can kick it, and you can repost him. And they can sometimes drop their armor set there as well, so that's nice. Going down this elevator, you want to drop off straight away, because there's going to be items, um, especially the Estus Shard just here. So you want to get that one. That's going to be our last Estus Shard. And from there, we're going to drop down, get the Titanite Chunk, um, just on this ledge. And then we're going to have a couple of Pusser Man. I'm going to preferably just leave the Pusser Man. We, basically, you're just throwing firebombs and hitting them from behind. So it's just going to take longer than it's really worth. So again, these guys you just go around the back of and hit. Okay, so that's the bottom of the elevator there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a left and you can go at the um, Ring of Sacrifice. From there, there's a couple of items underneath the platform. So what I tend to do is I tend to go diagonally from the right, grab the claw, the shadow set, and the fire bombs, and go and grab this human pine resin. And I'll tend to try and avoid that um, plus a man, so I'll just take this route, go and grab the dark gem, and if you go around the other side, just make sure you're ready to roll. Yep, I wasn't quite there with the roll, but uh, you can roll past him, and then as quick as you can, get up the top of this ledge, and that allows you to get the tuck. From there, what we're going to do is we're going to drop down the other side, and we can grab the couple items that are here. Um, so there's the Titanite Chunk, and there's the Pale, oh no, Human Pine Resin. So grab that, and then we're going to head back up this little section. Now this is the elevator shortcut back to the start. And what you can do here is you can actually rest to the bonfire. Um, especially now that I'm toxic, unless I've got a clump. Oh, I've got a clump, I'll just use the clump. But you can just go back to the bonfire. This is just back by the dancer fight. What we're going to do is we're going to grab the scale. Now, if you're a bit worried, you don't have to grab these items. You can come back for them as we're about to get the shortcut. But I'm just going to grab that scale and then the chunks. Just grab the chunk here and then you can open the door. From there, what we're going to do is we're going to just hop around the back of these guys. Again, mostly backstabbing is going to be your method if you actually want to fight them. Um, not really much point. They just do a lot of... Do a bit of damage to you, then run around a lot, and they're a bit tough to hit sometimes. So. The area pretty much, for me, is just a, it's just a run through. Oh, hello. What you want to do is you want to jump off the elevator about halfway, and... There will be the dragon scale rings, reduce damage from backstabs. And then there's this guy, I tend to hit him. And you can also, up to just so you know, there's Hawkwood sign there. So you can summon Hawkwood the deserter. Now with these Cathedral Knights, it's really your choice whether you want to fight them or not. Um, I tend to fight them just because I like them to be out the way and not coming after me. But again, it depends how much Estus. Um, you might end up using more Estus than you need. So, technique for them is you want to hold up your shield, you want to run around to the back, other than roll, and um, 
try and get the other one, and then you can get the backstab on them. If you don't get the backstab, you can just take a couple of swings. It's not too bad. You're just rolling, rolling through the attack and behind them and getting the backstab. And as I said, running around them is the easiest method, but if they're obviously going to be swinging at you, you want to be ready to take the roll. They have a couple of different attacks, like the overhead swings, the side swings, and the headbutts. Um, so just be aware of, of what they can throw out. So this is the Osiris fight. What I'd recommend for Osiris fight is using gold pine resin if you've got some. Uh, we don't actually have some, so what I'm going to do is I'd normally use the refined broadsword and just buff it. But the black knight sword is probably going to deal more damage if we don't have that. Um, so yeah. That's the way I'm going to go. For the Osiris fight, what you want to do is you want to get around uh, in front of him. So just roll through any attacks, get get about two hits on him and wait for the wait for his attack. He pretty much has staff attacks to start with and then he has the pestilent mist and he's got a tail whip as well. So wait for him to make those attacks and then you get a chance to get a couple of hits in. He does have that jump attack as well I guess. Oh, I actually thought that was pestilent mist there. Usually you want to stay just in front of him, but you can also hit him from behind like you see here. As soon as he does this, he does the roar, you want to get behind him, because second phase is a lot harder. You can just hold your shield up, and in fact that's probably the easiest method, is just hold your shield up when he does the tail swing. And you can actually get some criticals if you manage to stagger the head. And roll through, try and get behind him as much as possible because his body will become a hitbox if you don't roll through. Like if you don't stand behind him, sorry. Again, just one or two attacks every time, don't try and get too greedy. You can, as, as you saw there, you can roll through those attacks, uh, but his tail whip, you can... As long as you've got this shield of want or a knight shield or something that blocks 100% of physical damage, um, you can pretty much just hold that up, you don't have to worry about that too much. Now this is Cyrus, so what we're going to do is we're going to just grab the bonfire that's disappearing there. And we're going to make our way through to consume button. As far as I know, that's all the items that were in Consume King's Garden, so... You can get them pretty quickly. I mean, that's eight minute stream and we got all the items there. So that's pretty good. Uh, there's going to be this dragon boy that you come up to here. Um, again, same technique as always. Hold up your shield, wait for him to get a couple of attacks, get around and backstab. If you can't get the backstab, just double right bumper. Um, it's mainly about having a plus 10 weapon at this point. Uh, it'll just make things a lot easier for you. Uh, I'm sorry, I actually missed the chest here. There's a chest to the left. It's a little bit sort of disguised. Um, I think the first couple of playthroughs I actually missed that one. But yeah, there's that chest of the Titanite scale. There's this chest of the Titanite scale. And then I think it's two Titanite scales from each of the crystal lizards in the next area. So that's something to keep in mind as we come into Untended Graves. A lot of scales here. And I'm going to rest at that bonfire, just, um, and again, I could use my Estus Shard to get myself up to 15. Um, I'd recommend that if you are not familiar with Champion Gunda, he can be quite a tough fight if you're not used to him. Um, this little section, I tend to go for the staff person first, try not to hit that other one, and then the rest of them won't actually aggro until you attack them, so... You can actually get quite a good little jump on them if you do it that way. Continuing on, there is the Grave Wardens in this area that are a little bit more dangerous than a lot of foes, but um, we fought them before. So again, just roll through that first attack, get around behind, run around behind them if you can. 
He's being a little bit cheeky here. He doesn't want me to backstab him. And again, if, if they don't allow you to backstab them, you can just get the couple of right bumpers. Easiest method is that backstab. And they can drop the Grave Warden's um, Twin Blades as well. Warden's Twin Blades. Which are quite good for bleed builds. Again, if you trust your shield, it can take the hits from the Grave Warden, so that's always useful. Um, dog in here, watch out for him, and grab the chunk. As we come around to this next section, there's going to be four dogs. What I tend to do is I tend to take this dog out first. These two you can actually hit together if you're clever enough. Doesn't want to go down. Hold up your shield, and he's pretty simple after that. Tight night chunk, and then there's the two dogs here. You don't actually have to deal with them. There's no items, but I like just getting rid of them. Um, continuing on, there are the two ravenous crystal lizards with four chunks each. I mean, sorry, four titanite scales each, uh, in total. Um, so just come up to the left here. You'll trigger that one. That'll mean that the right one just stays where he is. So as long as you don't go too far, you'll be alright there. Get ready to roll for that first attack, and then again roll back when he does the crystals. Try and get around behind them as much as possible. Safer zone. You can get the repost there when he uh, rises up. Again, just try and stay behind them and you'll be able to stagger them if you're lucky. There you go. And that's the four scales that you can get from those ones. No more items in that little area, so don't worry about continuing on down there. And if we come back to the right, we will have the invader who will invade here. Um, before you fight the invader, it's important that you get the enemy to the left. So you'll see there's a little guy sitting down here to the left. He'll get up and start attacking you if you don't get the invader, so try and get him. You can sometimes get the backstab on this, and the NPC is actually kind of annoying at times, because they'll try and repost you. Uh, so what I'll tend to do is I'll tend to get them to come and try and attack me over here. She's not being very cooperative. Hold up your shield. Uh, no, she doesn't want to... Okay. Well, you can usually push her off the edge. So uh, That's sort of the easiest way to get the kill. Other than that, just try and get around her and get the backstab. If failing that, you can just literally right bump her, but watch out, parry. It's quite hard to backstab, that's why I tend to just actually hit her off the edge when I can. So. Anyway, that's Cream Hilled. Continuing on down this direction. Watch out for that guy, he'll come and try and backstab you. So what you can do is you can just sort of back off, wait for him to attack, and then you'll be able to finish him off. Coming down here, you can drop down again like you did on the Spire Link and grab the Hidden Blessing. So make sure you hold your shield up for that guy who's going to try and attack you. You can always plunge that guy. Doesn't really matter. I just tend to like to get that Hidden Blessing first. To the left here, there's a down. And then hold up your shield as soon as you attack him because you're going to have that guy shooting the crossbows at you. Uh, and then again, you got a couple of guys still around the side here. Um, you don't actually have to finish these guys off. I don't think there's any items down there. Let me just check. No. So you don't really have to worry about anything else here. You can pretty much go straight into the battle. Uh, this is one of the few battles I would actually recommend summoning the NPC just because if you're not parrying, um, Champion Gundu can be a real annoyance. So I'm actually going to summon Swordmaster for this battle. Can do it without summoning, but um, he just takes some of the aggro off Gundu, which makes it a lot easier to... Uh, first Gunda. Again, Champion Gunda is weak to lightning like Osiris was, so I would recommend buffing with Lightning Pine Resin if you have it. Alright, so you can get a couple of hits in, a couple of right bumpers before it starts. Wouldn't recommend getting more than three. And then what you want to do is you want to do the normal strats against Gunda. Um, have your shield up if you're worried. Try and just strafe around to the side. If you worry he's going to hit you, make sure that shield's up. And just try and strafe as much as possible if you've got the shield. 
to save some of your stamina. What you want to do is you want to roll twice there when he starts to do that um, Albert attack. Pretty much just hanging around the back of him as much as possible. Hold up your shield because that's the sort of thing that'll happen is he'll get really aggressive in the second phase. Lots of different attacks, I can't really go through them all. Um, Swordmaster just actually staggered in there for us, so that's a nice little help. And um, basically I try and just make sure that aggro me and um, me and Swordmaster and just kind of alternates between. Um, as, as soon as he's locked onto Swordmaster you get a chance for a lot of hits, which is really useful. We're just going to rest the bonfire before we get the last couple of items here. And then we'll be finishing the stream very shortly. Uh, by the way, um, I almost forgot to mention it. There's the Black Knight Glaive just hidden in the corner here. So I would recommend grabbing that one. A lot of people do like it. I'm not a huge fan of glaives, but it's up to your preference what you, what you enjoy using. Who knows, I might come to like it later. I have started to enjoy some of the Hellbirds a little bit more lately, so you never know. But great swords, if if you want sort of an easy playthrough, great set. Anyway, continuing on, you've got some black knights up here. What I tend to do is I follow this path up because then what you can do is you can take on the axe person, you can then take on the guy who's guarding the hornet ring. And then from there, um, you can go and take on this two more Black Knights to the left. So there's that one. Um, he doesn't actually normally come and attack me, but he's usually down on the left there. Uh, if you just follow the staircase down a little bit. Again, you can hit these guys as they're getting up. So that's sort of the easiest way to take them out, is, is if you manage to backstab them. They have a very big amount of time they take to get up where you can still actually hit them. Most enemies you have to wait till they're sort of half up. Uh, Black Knights you can just kind of attack as you go. So that's always useful. Um, that Knight actually just fell off himself, so normally I would use the backstab methods and there's a couple of right bumper attacks as they're getting up. But no need for it on him. Alright. I don't think this one's going to help us with our walkthrough as much. He's not going to just jump off the edge, so we're going to have to use the normal method on him, which is good. Uh, I want to showcase it there because it it just makes the knights so simple when you just hold up your shield, strafe around, get him in the back, and that's pretty much it. Finish them off with the right bumpers. Um, so there's the Chaos Blade that we just picked up up the top there, and then there's the Soul of Crestfallen Knight. I don't think there's anything here to the left. There was in the original fire link, but I'm pretty sure there's not here. And same goes, if you drop down the left here, that was where the hornet ring was. So nothing else in that section. Continuing forward, we can come to the right here, and that'll be the entrance to the dark fire link. Um, and in the dark fire link, there's a couple of things to pick up. First of all is the Coiled sword fragment, so we can equip that where our homeward bones were, because that means that we can just use it infinitely. It's basically an infinite amount of hum homeward bones that you can just keep using. As we continue on forwards, there is the blacksmith hammer. Um, what I would recommend as well is if you're thinking about doing an yeah, Artorias playthrough, um, you can purchase the wolf knight armor all here and you can get the priestess ring which increases faith so just take note of that handmade there that you can buy stuff um, again down the left here if you I'm not entirely sure how this works but I think it's to do with Yol um, Yol's ashes or Hollow's ashes will appear here I think if you haven't done his quest line so I think because we've done his quest line they don't but if you haven't done his quest line or he's died I think um, you can go and pick up the Hollow's Ashes on the left there. On the right, there is a secret passage. So someone's probably said there, ah, here. You can roll through that and you can get the Eyes of a Firekeeper. Now that's very important if you want to get the dark ending, the end of fire ending. Um, 
not really a dark ending actually it's I say dark because it it means putting out the flame basically dispelling the illusion I actually really like that ending so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go and um, I'll be shown now so I'll use the coiled sword fragment basically remember we put the coiled sword in there in the nook I tend to just use the coiled sword fragment at that place but you can use it wherever you want um, there's still the giant tree there there's still all the things that are in the normal fire link um, you just can't get into the tower in the dark fire link so what we're going to do is we are going to we're going to talk to the firekeeper we're going to give her the eyes of a firekeeper and only do this if you want the dark ending the, the end of end of fire ending how gracious of thee, Ashen One. The very things we firekeepers have been missing. Ashen One, my thanks for the eyes thou's given, but firekeepers are not meant to have eyes. It is forbidden. These will reveal through a sliver of light frightful images of betrayal. A world without fire. Fashion one, is this truly thy wish? And so I'm gonna go for the ending and I'm gonna say, Yep, I wish for a world without flame. I serve thee and will do as thou bidst. This will be our private affair. Of this. Stay thy path. Find lords to link the fire. And I will blindly tend to the flame. The day of thy grand betrayal. Um, you can also give the firekeeper soul that we got earlier, which allows you to cure the hollowing. Um, so if you want to do that, um, I'm not actually going to do the dark dark lord ending. So we're just going to do that. Ashen one, much then let it find its own place within my bosom. She will understand. We are. Forgive me, Smith. And then it depends on how many souls that you've got. So you, I need a lot of to heal that, so I'm not actually going to do it right now. But, um, yeah, what else are we doing? We don't really need to talk to anyone else, I don't think. I think that's all good. Alright, thank you guys for watching. I hope that was helpful. And we'll see you in the next one where we're doing Arch Dragon Peak. And then we'll go on to use Ariandel and um, Ring City after that one. Thanks for watching. Hope it was useful. And you can always check out my Facebook page, Nadmel74 Gaming. You can check out my YouTube, same name. And obviously, this is on Twitch. Um, I do it on Discord now as well. So. Uh, also, just Nadmel74, capital N, um, space, underscore, sorry, gaming. Um, no capital gaming. Thanks, guys, for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.